Investors love monthly dividend ETFs, dividend yields of 10, 12, even 15% cash flow every month and the safety of a fund. What could be better? How about that same cash flow every single week? I've found a way to combine the safety of a dividend fund with higher yields and get your dividend every week, all with just four stocks. I'll reveal those stocks, but stick around and I'll show you how easy this is and a full list of monthly dividend funds. Getting us started is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, ticker JEPI, with its 11% dividend yield. Now, this is easily my favorite among the covered call strategy ETFs, though I also like the XYLD. The portfolio managers have over 60 years experience in equities and it shows in this fund's performance. Not only is it a high yield, but also a defensive portfolio that won't fall apart when the market drops. The fund invests in defensive, large cap stocks like insurers, consumer staples, and pharmaceuticals. You can see here, it's all these bellwether stocks like AbbVie, Coca-Cola, and United Health. Now that gives it safety when the market tumbles, but then the portfolio manager also sells call options on the S&P 500, that broad stock market index, to generate the cash flow for those dividends. The fund holds shares of 131 companies with an average PE ratio of 19 times, only slightly more than the overall market average. And that strategy has worked very well, producing a positive total return even during the market crash of the last two years. You see here a chart of the price returns on the JEPI versus some of these other popular covered call funds, including the QYLD, the NUSI, and the XYLD. The JEPI has lost just 10% over the period, that green line at the top here, but has paid out over $10.50 in dividends, giving it the strong positive return. These other funds though, not so much. In fact, on the 21% drop in shares of the QYLD, even with that 12% dividend yield, it's still lost money over the period. And looking at this dividend history, we see the JEPI usually goes ex-dividend during the first week of the month, usually within that first three days, and has already paid out $1.87 in dividends this year. And we're just getting started, but just as important as listing out these dividend ETFs is how you set this up yourself. Now, this is largely gonna work the same as we did in last week's video with that monthly dividend stocks. You start a spreadsheet and then go to the dividend history here on Yahoo under historical data. Again here, we'll change that time period and then show dividends only to see all the ex-dividend dates for the fund. For example, here with the iShares Core Aggregate Bond ETF, that's the AGG, it typically goes ex-dividend in the first week of each month on the first few days. So we're gonna note that here in our spreadsheet. And here, we're also taking this a step further with noting in each fund what asset class it gives you whether it's a fund of bonds, stocks, real estate, or other assets. Now that's gonna be important because not only do these ETFs give you that opportunity to reduce your risk across hundreds or thousands of stocks, but also with exposure into bonds and other asset classes. I'll show you the entire list of monthly dividend ETFs later, but from here, it's just a matter of separating out the ETFs that pay out in different weeks of the month to make your plan. Now remember, as we talked about in last week's video, that ex-dividend date is different from the day that you're actually gonna get that dividend. The ex-dividend date is the first day that the stock trades without the dividend. So if you buy that stock on the ex-dividend date or later, you will not get that dividend until it comes around again in the next month. You need to buy and hold these before that ex-dividend date. So the payment date, the day you actually get the dividend, that's gonna be usually a week or two after this ex-dividend date. But by planning out our dividend stocks like this with this staggered approach where, where we have at least one monthly going ex-dividend each week, you can end up getting a dividend payment every week as well. Next on our monthly dividend ETF list is the InfraCap MLP fund, ticker AMZA, with its 8.5% dividend yield. The MLP fund holds master limited partnerships, companies that own oil and gas pipelines, as well as storage and processing facilities. It's 25 to 35 of the most popular names here, like Energy Transfer, Enterprise Products, and Magellan Midstream. These are very high yielding assets because they charge oil companies a fee to transport their oil and natural gas through those pipelines and then distribute at least 90% of that income onto investors. Because the government has slowed approval for new pipelines over the years, fees are climbing for these assets. And the best part about investing in an ETF like this is you don't have to manage that special K-1 tax form that you usually get with individual MLPs. What you get is not only a solid return when oil prices rise, but also more safety versus oil stocks when prices fall. Energy stocks in the S&P 500, the XLE fund in red here, have fallen 10% this year, but the AMZA is still positive with a 2.4% return plus its 8% dividend yield. And then once the economy starts growing again, oil prices could shoot higher and this fund is gonna produce an even higher return. Here we see the InfraCap MLP ETF usually goes ex-dividend in the third week of the month, between the 20th and the 21st. 
Now, I'm going to explain why I'm skipping that second week when I show you that full list of monthly dividend ETFs and kind of an alternative strategy next. And we'll get back to that list, but if I were to ask you what's the biggest risk to your investments, what would you say? Maybe not picking the right stocks, maybe a recession or a stock market crash. Nation, the biggest risk to your money is not having an investment plan, or worse still, not having one that's right for you. That's because I see too many investors get started, get excited about investing in stocks. They jump in picking stocks and then lose their hard earned money. They get frustrated, demotivated, and end up selling their stocks at a loss. They stop investing and never reach their goals. And then they become a statistic. They become one of the one in three Americans with zero saved for retirement, or one of the four in 10 retirees that live on less than $1,800 a month in social security. That's why I created this quick three-step guide to making your investing plan. Within five minutes, you'll be able to create an investing plan that makes your goals the motivation to keep investing and that is customized to your needs. This is totally free. I'm not gonna try to sell you anything. I've just seen too many investors miss out on that opportunity to make their money work for them, and it's because they didn't have a plan that fit their needs. So I'm gonna leave that link below to get your free quick start plan. Click through, download your free step-by-step. -step. Nation, please do not be one of the 40% of Americans that have stopped investing or the nearly eight in 10 that regret not investing earlier. We're into our fourth week dividend stock here, and one of my favorites, the Simplify Volatility Premium ETF, ticker SVOL, and it's 17.8% dividend yield. And one of the reasons I really like the SVOL here is because it's so different from what you're gonna find in those other stocks or bonds ETFs. The SVOL is a completely different strategy. The Volatility ETF works on a short volatility strategy, selling futures on the VIX volatility index. A volatility is just how much the market or a stock moves up or down in a given period, a gauge of that stock market craziness. The higher the volatility, the more you should expect an investment to bounce around and the higher the risk. The Volatility Index, or the VIX, this is the market's expectation for volatility over the next month. It's not just a measure of market risk and uncertainty, it's investors' expectations for the risk, how crazy investors believe the prices are gonna be. And while you can't invest directly in that volatility index, you can invest indirectly through futures, options, and ETFs, betting whether actual volatility will be higher or lower than expected. But then the SVOL isn't really making a directional bet here one way or the other. It's not trying to time the market, saying that investors are wrong one way or the other. The volatility ETF is simply saying that market expectations for volatility are typically higher than actuality. And shorting those expectations, so selling futures contracts against the VIX is a way to capture that fear premium in the market. And this strategy is backed up by research, testing VIX futures shorting from 2005 through 2015. Rolling those short contracts over each month was profitable in eight of the 11 years, with an average monthly return of 0.7% and a total return of 118% over the period. Now, besides the returns and the dividends here, the reason why I like this ETF is that it is a totally different asset class. That premium for shorting the volatility index is reliable and robust, and the VIX has a historically negative correlation with stocks. When stocks go up, the VIX usually goes down, and vice versa. The correlation here is a negative 0.84, which is a very strong relationship, meaning using a volatility strategy along with your stock portfolio can be a great way to reduce risk. So I love that this is an opportunity in a different asset class. There are plenty of stock dividend funds and those covered call ETFs basically doing the same thing. An investment in one is pretty much the same as any other and they're all gonna go in that same direction along with the market. But here with the volatility ETF, you have an opportunity to spread out your risk into another asset that shouldn't move one-to-one -one with stocks and can actually help you keep your return while minimizing the risk. And checking the dividend history here, we see a consistent monthly dividend and X dividend dates in the last week of the month, usually between the 25th through the 27th. Here is that full list of 38 monthly dividend ETFs and you immediately see the problem. The donut hole in the middle with little or no options for dividends in the second or the third week of the month. Now that's why I think the best strategy here may be combining this with that monthly dividend stocks video we talked about last week. In fact, it may be a perfect match because we saw in that schedule with a lack of good options investing in the first and second weeks of the month. So what I would wanna do here is choose monthly dividend ETFs that go ex-dividend in the first and the last week to give me that diversification and the safety that you only get with ETFs. Here, I really like the JEPI and that SVOL that we covered, but also some good options here include funds like the iShares High Yield Bond ETF, that's the ticker HYG, with its 5.5% dividend and safety in bonds, 
or the multi-asset income ETF, the MDIV, with its 7% yield and multi-asset approach. Then I've got the four dividend stocks that we highlighted in last week's video, giving me not only that week two and week three dividends, but a super shot at dividends in the first and last weeks. Either way, you'll have a great strategy for double digit dividend cash flow every single week. Get your free quick start guide with the link below to making an investing plan right for you, or click on the video to the right for that list of monthly dividend stocks by week, all 30 monthly payers and which week they pay. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.